Hey, good evening. Welcome to the Third and Fifth Angels Ministries. My name is Evangelist Richard Gonzalez, and we're going to continue our part two of Manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to turn to our key text in Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2. In reading, in your hearing, be glad in the children of Zion, and rejoice in the Jehovah your Elohim. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain in the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Our Father who art in heaven, we praise you that you reveal these things to the meek, humble people. Bless us with thy spirit. And bless my words and help me to focus, to deliver this message to your people. In your holy name we pray, Yeshua HaMashiach. And Yahshua's people said, Amen. Amen. In the beginning, we had men and women that were involved in the Seventh day Adventist Church. And what these men and women did, they elected five officials. One of them was G.I. Butler, who was the chairman. And upon these issues consisted of G.I. Butler, who was a Seventh-day Adventist. These five officials were all officials of the Seventh-day Adventist. Butler appointed the committee as follows. Butler, the chairman, Willie C. White, is Alan White's son. Three, Uriah Smith. Four, J.H. Wagner. Five, S.N. Haskell. In reading, that this body appointed Committee of Five to take charge of the republication of these volumes according to the above preambles resolutions. Review and held November 27, 1883, the same year that the General Conference was held. In this study, we're going to continue in the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in regards to what we need to prepare for first. We need His Spirit, Richard, to grow. But our fallen nature doesn't want to let that happen. So we have to crucify this flesh every day, every moment. And because we don't want to know what heaven has, we have to fight to get that information. We have to have a love for it. And continuing, cumbered with humanity, Christ could not be in every place personally. Why? Because he gave up omnipresent. Therefore, it was altogether for their advantage that he should leave them Go to his Father and send the Holy Spirit. Well, how come our Savior couldn't do it while he was here on earth, everyone? Because he had not received the authority yet. He had not received the Spirit from the Father yet. In reading, and by the way, what I'm reading to you is correct. Therefore, it was altogether for their advantage that he, Yeshua, should leave them, go to his Father and send the Holy Spirit to be his successor on earth. His spirit. The Holy Spirit is himself divested of the personality of humanity and independent thereof. He would represent himself as present in all places by his Holy Spirit as omnipresent. Can I hear an amen? John 17, verse 7. Let's go to John chapter 17, verse 7. John chapter 17, verse 7. In reading, and you're hearing. John 17, verse 7. Now they have known all that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are thee. Okay? Let me read it again. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are thee. Are of thee. Nobody corrected me here. Are we reading? All things of thee. They belong to our Savior, our Father. Our Father gave it to Yeshua. Okay. Manuscript release, volume 14, page 23, paragraph 3. 1895 edition is correct. Omnipotent, omniscient, only present. Once again, let us focus. At one time, the Father. And the Son had omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. 
prior to Christ coming to the earth, he gave up omnipresent. Why? Because there was a transition coming in that he would send the Father's Spirit that would be given from the Father to the Son in the year 31 AD, the Feast of Weeks. <coughs> These three components they both had. But Christ will never return to the feet to receive omnipresent again. He's human form. He eats. He drinks. And it was for our purpose that he would return to the Father, that the Father would breathe upon Christ his spirit. As Christ received the spirit and authority, he gave it to humanity on earth. So at one time, the Father and the Son had omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Christ gave up omnipresent. Comparing the changes, and I'm going to read it so you will see it now, what the changes are. They wrote, they rewrote this in his Hour of Ages that was written by Marion, Marion Davis and others, and Willie White. But let me do the comparison here. The Holy Spirit is Christ's representative, but divested of the personality of humanity and independent thereof. Now the information that's added begins here. Okay, they changed the whole sentence. In reading, cumbered with humanity, Christ could not be in every place personally. Therefore, it was for their interest that he should go to his Father, to the Father, and send the, and send the Spirit to be his successor on earth. So it's telling us there in another area that he had to go to the Father, receive his spirit, and inaugurate that manifestation to come to the earth. That each one that would be obedient on the condition of obedience to his laws would receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to us not because we're perfect. It's given to us to help us to be perfect. Nothing's holding anybody back. The Holy Spirit is given to you to help you to be perfect. Not when you're perfect. Because that day's never going to come without His manifestation. Read it again. Cumbered with humanity, Christ could not be in every place personally. Therefore, it was for their interest that He should go to the Father and send the Spirit to be His successor on earth. Here comes the added information. Dee, 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 dee. By the Spirit, the Savior would be accessible to all. In this sense, he would be nearer to them than if he had not ascended on high. Your incorrect reference is these are ages, page 669, paragraph 2, 1898 edition. Okay? The book that was written was Our Lord Upon the Earth, written in 1866. 32 years later, they finally completed the book and named it these are ages. Okay. So there's a 32 year difference. And these are the writers of Samuel J. Andrews. This is where all this mess comes from. Later on, maybe by next year sometime, the beginning of the year, I will give you a study on the Tsar of Ages and who were all the people that put the book together. I will show you the book where it all came from, Samuel J. Andrews, who was a Sunday keeper. And continuing, here's the correct reference. Covered with humanity, Christ could not be in every place personally. Therefore, it was altogether for their advantage that he should leave them, go to his Father, and send the Holy Spirit to be his successor on earth. The Holy Spirit is himself divested of the personality of humanity and independent thereof. He, Yeshua, would represent himself as present, only present, in all places by his Holy Spirit as omnipresent. John 17, verse 7, Manuscript Release, Volume 14, page 23, paragraph 3, 1895. This is correct. Focus on the dates. In the year 1895, 1898, the prophet Algie White dictated, and here's the key, she dictated, she wrote. So you and I cannot rewrite that. One, Manuscript Release, Volume 14, page 23, Paragraph 3, 1895 is correct. Note, we have three-year difference with the Tsar of Ages. The Tsar of Ages was written three years later. The Tsar of Ages, page 669, Paragraph 2, 1898, incorrect. Here's your reference. You want information? Write it down. 
the third the term excuse me the term third person of the Godhead refers to the glorified life of Christ it is not a separate co-eternal person it is himself Yeshua Jesus divested power from the personality of humanity let me read it again now but I want you to focus what's going on here it says the term third person of the Godhead refers to the glorified life of Christ it is not a separate co-eternal person it is himself Yeshua that's his manifestation that he's given to us Jesus divested referring to his power it is Yeshua in his power from the personality of humanity 14 MR 23 paragraph 3 no it is the manifestation of the father working through his son he surrendered omnipresent so why is everybody arguing here the word Godhead means divinity holiness they're divine in the sanctuary as I shared before and I won't have time to open it but when we go into the sanctuary you don't see any thrones in there when we go into the holy place you don't see no throne in there but when we go into the most holy of holies now you see a throne and on that throne is sitting Yeshua and his son and, and his father but where's the chair for the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is in them it's their manifestation that's been given through his son because he died for you his hands were, were nailed to the cross and his ribs were pierced and his feet were pierced there's only two thrones so when you go into the holy place you look at the manna okay well the manna you got six loaves on the left six loaves on the uh, right you can say okay well the, the father sits on the right side and the son sits on the left side there's the throne that's fine but guess what you don't see a third chair a third throne you don't see it thy way O Yahweh is in thy sanctuary Psalm 77 verse 13 can I hear an amen? amen the Holy Spirit the Lord's throne is in heaven yet by his spirit he is everywhere present only present your reference is education page 132 1903 edition two when is the latter rain ladies and gentlemen because the latter rain rain is what, what was the definition of it? it's Yahweh statues judgment and ordinance so when, when are we going to be sealed with it when are we going to receive it when are we going to receive it we are told in scripture excuse me that we must ask for the Holy Spirit to empower us Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and ye shall receive power from on high after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be my witnesses in Samaria and Judea and Jerusalem throughout the whole areas and around the whole world and follow the directions in which were given to the Hebrews as well as to the Gentiles in Leviticus chapter 23 verse 15 to 22 <coughs> The same pattern, but one may receive the early rain before or after water baptism, which is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So let us turn to Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23, and we're going to look at verse 15 and 22. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 15, is referring to the Feast of Weeks. And ye shall count unto you, now he's given us the instructions when to count. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf, the wave sheaf, of the wave, offering seven Sabbaths. So that's going to be seven weeks. Shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days. He's given us instructions when to count. For the Feast of Weeks. And ye shall offer a new meat offering and the Jehovah, unto the Jehovah. Ye shall bring out of your inhabitants, habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. 
they shall be bacon with leaven, they are the first fruits unto the Jehovah. Verse 18, and ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one young bullock and two rams, they shall be for a burnt offering unto the Jehovah, with their meat offering and their drink offerings, even unto the offering made by fire of sweet Savior unto the Jehovah. Verse 19. Then ye shall sacrifice one kid, the goats, for a sin offering, and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offerings. Now remember, this was what was occurring when it was first given to them. They were using animals for type and type type. Today we don't do any of this because Christ is our sacrifice. He's been offered. What verse are we left off with, ladies and gentlemen? What verse is next? 20. Thank you. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Yehovah with the two lambs. They shall be holy to the Yehovah for the priest. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be a holy convocation. And what, ladies and gentlemen? A holy convocation. <coughs> That's a Sabbath. Unto you. Ye shall do no civil work therein. It shall be a statute, 2707, still binding, forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. Verse 22. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean radiance of the corners of thy field. When thou reapest, neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor. So when you go and pick the oranges in the fields, in the orchards, you're going to leave a few trees there in the corners of those fields so that the poor people can come and pick them. That's what it's referring to. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Yehovah, your Elohim. Can I hear an amen? amen. The same pattern, but one may receive the early rain before or after water baptism, which is the manifestation of the Spirit. So yes, you can receive the early rain and the latter rain before or after baptism, but if you received it before, just like the disciples and other Gentiles, or you have not, you need to ask. So you may receive it before baptism, but you still need to be baptized. You still need to be immersed. Can I hear an amen? amen. You're, you're no different than anybody else. We're all the same. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, what is it? What is the baptism of the Holy Spirit that everybody's asking for and asking for, but they haven't received it? Let's read. By praying for it, number one. But some never receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit because they are unwilling to give up unknown sin, all these secret sins. When the parents ask you, put the phone away, put it here, leave it there when you come from school, and when you leave to school, you can go ahead and pick it back up, but that's the only time you're going to use it. When you disobey, you're grieving the Spirit. That's just a small example. However, I have no specific time of which to speak when the outpouring of the Spirit will take place. My message is that our only safety is in being ready for the heavenly refreshing, having our lamps trimmed and burning. Review and Hill, November 22nd, 1892, SDA, Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 984. Okay? So she just said it right there. The prophet just mentioned it. I saw that if the church had always, what? Retained her peculiar holy character, the power of the Holy Spirit, which was imparted to the disciples, would still be with her would still be within the Seventh-day Adventist Church, but it's not in the Seventh-day Adventist Church any longer. Testimonies number 18, page 126 to 130. <coughs> Excuse, me. <coughs> Excuse me. The sick would be healed. Two, devils would be rebuked and cast out. And three, and she would be mighty and a terror to her enemies. Can I hear an amen? Amen. 
This is early writings, page 227. You find it in the 1858 Great Controversy. Okay? A, the problem is with God's people. It's not with the Father in heaven. It's with you. It's with me. I'm not only included. I'm not special. A, I'm going to read it once again. The problem is with God's people. God has not been withholding anything through the ages. So you want to believe in God here? Three gods? That's fine, because you're all learning. You're all in school. So when you come out of school, you better have the truth. You better have a good, good Bible. You better have the good original books that the prophet wrote. B, sealing. Ooh, sealing. One, deep, indeniable, spiritual imprinting. That's part of the sealing. See, the prophet Alan G. White states that the kingdom of Satan trembles when the weakest saint is on his knees. Are you listening to me? The descent of the Holy Spirit on the church is looked forward as to, to as in the future. It's now. It's not in the future, it's now. But it is the privilege of the church to have it now, seek for it, pray for it, believe for it. We must have it, and heaven is waiting to bestow it upon you. Early writings, page 701. Let us with contrite heart pray most earnestly that now in this time of the latter rain, we're living right now in the time of the latter rain, ladies and gentlemen, the showers of grace will fall upon us. It's intellectual knowledge. These showers is intellectual knowledge. Amen. It's just not some super manifestation take. No, no. It's intellectual knowledge. But it is the manifestation of our Savior that's being given to you. Pray for yourselves and others. Let us be converted in the scriptures. But let us repent. First John chapter 1, verse 9 of our heirs today. It will take a restudy of the spirit of prophecy, the original books, there are four volumes, and the Bible, to grow in his character instead of just asking because it's written. We have to search for it, pray for the latter rain. This is what needs to be done. It's just only coming from the pulpit, ladies and gentlemen. You have to search for it. You have to read it and experience it. Daily, not just one day. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. A, the time of the latter rain has always been present since 31 AD, the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost. It's always been present. It's not sometime in the future, it's now. You need to receive it now. One, whenever, wherever people of Elohim have prepared, they have experienced manifestations of the latter rain. Can I hear an amen? Two, God's Spirit, or Elohim's Spirit, is always available in fullness, but only given to those totally emptied of self. You've got to clean up your life. What do you want? You're not going to buy the Holy Spirit with money, and you're not going to buy the Holy Spirit by influence. Stop doing that. A, the conditions must be right for the rain to fall, intellectual knowledge to be received through you, which comes from Christ. You must be ready for it. Your vessel has to be empty. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. After the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, the windows of heaven opened and rain showers of blessings, but we keep praying for moon monsoons when they never come. So, your rain is referring to justification as you come into the sanctuary and your sanctification. So your justification happens here. That's where it happens. Your sanctification begins in the holy place. Justification and sanctification in Christ. Christ died for us and was crucified for us. Pray to be a vessel prepared to hold the rain, ladies and gentlemen. Pray to be a vessel prepared to hold the rain. 
to hold the intellectual knowledge in your vessel. Prepare for it. Because ye have received the down payment of the Holy Spirit, and now you are in the process of learning to ask for the Holy Spirit and hold on to it, Ephesians 1, verse 10 to 14. So those who have been baptized, immersed, have received the down payment of the Holy Spirit, a down payment of eternal life. But the fullness is given to us at his second coming. People of faith, it takes a personal experience to know how to hold on to the Holy Spirit. It's not a one-time experience, ladies and gentlemen. That's where we fall at. The Holy Spirit is waiting for channels through which to work. The Spirit of Elohim will be poured out on the church just as soon as the vessels, the people, are prepared to receive it. Your reference is Knowing Him, page 130, referring to the remnant. Not chronological readiness, but experiential readiness. When Elohim's people will believe, when they will turn their attention to that which is true and living and real, the Holy Spirit in strong heavenly currents will be poured out upon the church. Manuscript 21, what year? 1900. As we continue, I want to re-emphasize the key points. Thoughts, actions, all focus on will and glory of Elohim. One, absorbed in spiritual activity. Two, too many things to complete, to compete for attention. Three, exaltation of Yeshua as our Savior and Elohim. Let us examine ourselves in these last days in these key points. Covenant. The restoration of the Spirit is the covenant of grace upon us. His Spirit. Your reference the signs of the times, August 7, 1901. I wanted to bring something out. It's found in the Review and Herald articles. It's volume three. Volume three. We're going to turn to page 410. Review and Hill, page 410. Volume, Review and Hill, volume 3, page 410. Now, I want to read this to us because I want to share with us what's been happening here. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is the Church of Middleton. That's true. But it never, ever becomes the Church Triumphant. In reading... This is entitled, Love to God and Man by the Prophet Alan G. White. Written in Battle Creek, Michigan, November 17, 1896. Volume 73, number 46, whole number 2194. In reading, Would it not be the safer plan, my brethren and sisters, to keep the commandments of Elohim in the spirit and in the letter? Obedience to the first four in which is enjoined supreme love for Elohim will lead us to love our neighbor as ourselves. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love Elohim, God, whom he hath not seen? It is because so many members of the church do not bring the commandments of Elohim into the daily life that there is so little of the love of Elohim manifested one toward another. And the absence of this love makes the church weak and inefficient. In reading, the church militant is not the church triumphant. You're repeating? The church of militant is not the church triumphant, as many of have been taught. Satan is actively working. He is watching the character of each one to find out whom he can most successfully tempt to dishonor Elohim. By departing from his holy commandments, Christ says, A new commandment I give 
unto you and those who are present. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. In reading, let me rephrase this once again. Satan is actively working. He is watching the character of each one to find out whom he can most successfully tempt to dishonor God by departing from his holy commandments. Christ says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye love one another, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye have loved one to another, he that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. The love here commanded is not so clothed with selfishness that is not discerned. He that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth. Darkness has blinded his eyes, he is deceived by the enemy, and as a result the spirit of the arch deceiver actuates his works. Works of such a character as to hurt, misjudge, and destroy. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son, in the Father. That's very bold. So we want to keep the statutes, we want to keep the judgment, we want to keep the feast, we want to keep the weekly Sabbath. But if this gentleness and love is not important to you or you important to others, then this whole message doesn't mean anything. And in reading the note, I'll take that. Oh, thank you, thank you. I myself have been asked many, many questions. Has the Lord called you? Where'd you get the information? There's a lot of doubting. Well, I have been called. I was called in March of 1993. That's when I heard his voice. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, and that ear shall hear a voice behind me saying, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Walk that narrow path. And I had to search and understand, was this from the Father or was it from the devil or an evil spirit? Many of us have gone to schools. That's good, you've gone to schools. But for me personally, that was just the basics. Now we're out in the field, now we're working, now we're learning what the message is all about, what's happened. My testimony and what I've shared to you throughout all these studies that are on YouTube are all true, all of them. And I bet my life on it, to be assured. I also want to mention to us that we have a book. It is the great controversy between Christ and his angels and Satan and his angels, comparing the 1911 Great Controversy in red and the 1884 Great Controversy in blue. So the book is color coded. Everything that's written in black is correct. Everything that's in red is inserted by the officials of the Seventh Heavenist Church. It has not been dictated, it's not been blessed. That's where the fault is at. Everything in blue is correct, but it's more deeper. It's correct, they omitted it. So you have no clue that it was there. Ladies and gentlemen, this book has been put together for the edification of your salvation, to be edified of what is going on. Here's your answer. You can buy it at Barnes & Noble, um, Amazon, or directly from us. You can call us at 540-370-1844, or you can email daniel-revelation at joe.com. In this hardback cover, you also have a DVD inside. It's one hour long more deeper information that you haven't even read or come across. 
In the Religious Liberty Department, there was a gentleman named Lincoln Steed. April 4, 2018, he's, in our conversation, he shared thus. Religious Liberty Elder Lincoln Steed says, the Adventist Church has lost its way, and that it has. If you'd like to obtain this book, get it. Because Alan G. White exalted the 1884 Great Controversy above silver and gold. It wasn't in 1911 that you've all been taught and these pastors and others that have gone before you have been lying to you. It's all in here. All the documentation, the original writings, everything that took place, the prophecies that were given prior to this taking place. Let us close in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, it is my prayer that your people may be edified, that they will attain, obtain these books. We also ask for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon everybody in the world that is studying and preparing for your coming. And prepare us to keep your Sabbath holy, not to trifle upon it. Forgive us of our shortcomings, our sins. Be with the men and women in prison, death row, the youth camps, in the San Joaquin Valley, around the world. Be with those who are incarcerated falsely. We ask for your mercy upon our government, the Seventh-day Adventist administration, its departments, people that are employed with those departments, leading and directing people in the wrong way. I ask for the outpouring of your holy love and rebuke upon Lincoln Steed that you correct him in the Sabbath school lessons that are put out worldwide from the denomination. We are not perfect, but we are people that are wanting and willing to go home. We ask that you help us to be revived and give the first, second, and third angels message in learning and deeply they have changed the messages, and it's listed here in your book in what, the, in what they changed. This is what the prophet was given to write from you. She dictated it. She wrote it in faith, and the devil tried to kill her throughout this whole work. We ask that you bless us and guide us, and most of all, is this the way, walk ye in it. In the name of Yeshua we pray, and Yahshua's people said, Amen. Amen.